It is repetition which makes for perfection. Oh boy. You can also feel start drawing ahead and talking about drawing. So I wanted to kind of focus more on drawing in general. So hopefully I can walk you guys through it. I mean, the whole stream is dedicated to, to drawing, but even on, on, on the Sunday streams I'm thinking. All right, so this is a very kind of generic person at this point. So be mindful of the center line. All right, to me that's sort of like the equator of the globe. You have these lines here, All right? That run kind of from the neck across the the main part of the pec down the sides of the the rib cage. This line, the arms kind of go into that, that socket here. Because the figures turn slightly, you see more of that shoulder and less of that one, but you see more of that bicep. And, well, you see both biceps, but this one is more the front facing part of the bicep, and this is more of the side, side bicep. Then the other thing I like to do is where the pec goes here, you can also draw lines that kind of flare out like this, if if the chest is swelled up a little bit, the uh, meridian lines, whatever the uh, the vector lines that kind of run across the surface and uh, create the three dimensional form, would be curved slightly, right? Obviously not to this extent. This muscle still needs to induct. I believe that's what the uh, technical term is: induct into that kind of armpit area there. But it's good to think about these kind of shapes. All right. And I don't draw these out, um, but I'm, I'm, maybe I have an overlay on top of it that kind of uh, helps inform the cross hatching. People just think like cross hatching, you're just putting lines on the paper to kind of distract and create busy work. Uh, part of that's true, but it works best if the cross hatching again reinforces the forms and the shapes uh, that you see in your head that you want to convey to the viewer, right? So, in your head, if you can create these um, sort of meridian lines, if this were a globe, right? Um, could even be Spider-Man webbing at this point. Uh, you will see that they all are unique for the most part. And where they start, where they end, and also the, um, the curve, the curvature, right? The, um, the, uh, their slopes, their, uh, their shape, you know, as it goes from one point to the other. So that that line and that line are more or less parallel, except they converge more over here than where they start. And I'm, I'm laying these down fairly sloppily, fairly loosely, but if you um, want to get good at this, I think, you uh, I want to get very precise with your lines, right? You can do a very nuanced kind of line where it goes 
goes over the rib at the uh, collarbone here, down here, curves in where the bottom of the pec comes in here, maybe bumps a little bit. I don't know. Maybe bump. no, probably doesn't. Okay. I think one of the reasons. <clears throat> well, I've really never drawn this character. Is uh, it's a lot trickier than you think. Okay. Um, in that, the helmet is actually really large, <clears throat> so you have to account for um, that size difference. It's larger than you think. The same way you would draw a soldier's helmet, um, like like Vietnam era, especially or World War Two. Uh, they they're usually a lot longer, uh, larger. A lot of people when they draw them for the first time, that the 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 helmets are too snug on them, on the uh, on the uh, figures. <clears throat> and if you really want great reference for that, look at the Nam comic book by Michael Golden, and he exaggerated it to great effect. And he had cartoony figures with realistic gear, and he just killed it. It was awesome. Okay. So, I'm like looking at the reference here. Boy. I think I put one of these helmets on once. A friend of mine owned like a replica. And so it's uh, <clears throat> also very similar to a German World War II helmet in that there are some unusual angles to it. So when you look at it, Certainly from a three-quarter perspective like I am here, it's not symmetrical at all. Okay. Same thing with like Boba Fett's helmet. You have to, it's much larger than you think. Alright. So I'm really, <clears throat> to make it easier on myself, um, I'm trying not to think of it as I'm drawing Boba Fett's, or <laughs> Darth Vader's helmet. Uh, this is something I've kind of tried to teach when I've done live drawing sessions at Comic Cons for fans, like how to draw Batman. Is don't really get caught up in this idea that you're drawing Batman because you'll start drawing things that you think are Batman-like, uh, when in fact you should be thinking about drawing certain shapes and angles. It's almost like don't look at <clears throat> if you're doing a, a huge painting. Look at that little section of green that represents a tree and get those colors right and then move on to the next section of the painting rather than draw, painting leaves. If you start thinking painting leaves, you're going to start drawing, <coughs> drawing and painting actual representations, graphical images of what you think leaves are based on like kind of the triangular shapes or the, the uh, teardrop shapes that most people use. And you will be drawing more of that symbol or that representation of a leaf rather than what a tree or a bunch of leaves would look like from a distance where you don't see that level of detail and all you see is color, shadow, um, reflections, right? So I'm not thinking about drawing a helmet. I At this point, I'm trying to look at it as just like I did with here, all these vertices uh, or these meridian lines. I'm trying to think where these meridians line, that the angle of the lines and less the object itself. So there's a center thing that starts off here between the eyes and it um, goes at a slope like this and then it curves sharply at the top. Okay, all right. And then right about here, distance wise, it arcs and it ends up where this point meets and this where this point meets and this point see already I'm seeing that this point should be lower way lower okay so that helps inform all right that's where I put it but I think it should be lower and then that is parallel to that and that distance is roughly that Okay. Right. You can already see kind of how 
it's starting to balloon out even more, which is where I think it should be. And this shape here is actually much shorter than, again, <clears throat> I was drawing what I know that, <coughs> excuse me, what I know exists, and what I'm drawing now is the actual shape as it exists on that image, okay, which is not informed by the 3D image I have in my head. That sounds complicated. I wish I could simplify that language a bit. The great thing, though, is that even after I do this, I can adjust the size of the torso to accommodate. Now, there's some weird stuff going on here in terms of... These shapes, it's not super clear on this image. I could have picked a higher res um, version of this picture. So unfortunately for me, frankly, if I were going to do this like as a uh, actual published piece, I would just print out, I probably would just print out a photo and like trace the, the shape of it because it's so precise. And then I would, uh, start exaggerating and altering it off of that base to make it more personal, make it more my own, right? You start um, going like, okay, I'm going to make the, 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 the tail part of the helmet. Maybe I'm going to flare that out a little bit more, or maybe I'll make the eyes kind of, the eyebrow part of it a little more, ta like a little more angled, just to make it look a little more sinister, maybe a little more animated, maybe. Um, but there's nothing inherently wrong with with um, tracing an image. I know a lot of people consider that treat, ch cheating or having a photo there and drawing it. It does limit you, I think. If you always do that, you're always going to end up drawing something that uh, reflects reality really one-to-one -one, or maybe uh, doesn't have a lot of vitality in the line work. But um, even doing that is not easily done, meaning um, it's not really a cheat, in my opinion, because to, to um, it's not that you can't draw it from looking at it. And it's it's uh, at the end of the day, the final image is what counts. So when I'm at this stage, I'm trying to look past the things that would throw me off, which are shadows reflections, uh, what I think the helmet looks like, okay, I'm really trying to look at it as if I'm drawing a map of England, right, it's very nuanced, all these little crags and crevices and archipelagos and uh, peninsulas that jut out, um, and they have a very specific relationship to each other geospatially, okay, um, so the more I can divorce myself from thinking that I'm drawing Darth Vader and more that I'm just drawing a series of shapes, um, the better it's going to be for me, I think. Okay. There will be a point where I engage and go like, oh, I'm drawing Darth Vader and put the motion into it. But right now, I want to just really focus on the construction lines. And, you, and you're probably wondering, what's the difference between the two? How do you put a motion into a drawing? And uh, that one's tough to describe other than to say, at some point, uh, you got to, you know, uh, you know, connect to the image, connect to what it is that you're drawing, the emotional state of the character you're drawing. Um, see, in my head, if I were drawing it from scratch, I would put, put that out more like that. But no, it, it, this is right. It's odd. This is less up and down. Okay. But 
this is parallel to this line, so this line is the angle's not right. All right, and this ends up being a lot more pulled out in that direction than I would have imagined. Okay. And actually this the neckline is right here. Okay. Man, I want to fix this line so badly, but it keeps telling me that's where it is. I might pull it out a little bit later when I get to the more personal section of the competition. Okay. And this is shorter. I'm going to have to pull a different reference. This one is very darkly in shadow, so I'm losing a little bit of the structure in here. I can kind of recreate it based on the fact that I know it's symmetrical, and so any of these shapes are going to be reflected over here. So let me try that for a little bit. I know there's a triangle element here, so it's going to be right there in perspective. But again, there's some very tricky reflections going on. And it looks like right there, that goes black. This point, this point, this point, and this point kind of form that kind of shape. So I think I'm, this needs to be pulled out a little bit more. Okay. And if I press on the angled part of it, I can actually kind of uh, draw using the eraser. Okay, if I had to do some highlights, really how kind of flared out this is. And how there's even a subtle break to this line. See how it's still relatively straight, but I just put a very subtle break right here. Right? This is curved, this is straight. I might not have gleaned that from the very first uh, reference I looked at, okay? When I say hobby, it's something that I started to do in conjunction with my kids. Because um, I noticed they were watching Twitch and just got very, very curious about why and who and... Uh, all that. And then I started approaching it from the standpoint of uh, new social right and I kind of like I think the uh, from a teaching perspective um, uh, but also as a a if I were a comic book artist starting out now, so so even this line, it's not flares out, dips in, and then it goes down. I started thinking about what I would do differently, and it's not like it goes straight and then cuts over. It actually, there's a softness to that line, and it goes like that. 
and there's a hard edge for sure right there. Um, so what I would do differently, because I was 20, was a bunch of... Um, there are two ways to get notes. You could mail in work, or you could show your work in person. You could show your work in person to a professional, an editor. Right? The only way you're going to show them in person is if you go to their offices with an appointment. Uh, which I guess some people that lived in New York were able to do back in the day with Marvel in DC. Um, so I, I use the initial tack, which is photocopy my work and then mail it into the offices. And that pretty much netted uh, uh, rejection letter after rejection letter. Um, okay, hold on a second. Doing some important work. I have to utilize both brain cells at once. Okay. So weird. See, I would think that grill would have come down like this, but the reference is telling me no. Like this. Okay. And then... I guess little pins right here. Kind of how they broke in and how they work and stuff like that. So um, I could find professionals at comic book shops maybe. Like there was always somebody locally that had kind of broken in. And in St. Louis there was a comic shop where a guy named Rick Burkett had, he, he actually worked at DC. And he was like uh, a font of wisdom. And uh, there's detail back here. I know it's in shadow, so I don't have to worry too much about it. Okay. To me... So I'm going to have to come down here and add a little bit more. Let's see if that makes a difference. Maybe it needs to be a little thinner. I think this needs to be wider back here. Now I'm not working off of reference, I'm just working off of kind of the reverse image. So it's like if you draw... This. As a first, first attempt at drawing this character. And I think that is the, the trickier part. You know, you go to like Disney World, Disneyland, you see stormtroopers, you know, official licensed versions of Darth Vader and everything. You go like, I've seen these. It's not as cool as it would have been, you know, certainly when I was a kid. 
because you never saw this stuff. But now, if you go to Comic Con, you you know Darth Vader's are kind of a dime a dozen, to be honest, right? Especially stormtroopers. Okay. So I think artists and engagement with audience and conventions and you know, it's very much a. a a very viable, successful business model. So what's the upper limit for this? And I look at not just videos that comic book artists have, but just any artist, any videos by any artist, right? Uh, you look at... Um, uh, how-to videos that he, I've even done from years ago, there are hundreds of thousands of views. You look at uh, Victor's, uh, VZA's um, YouTube stream uh, channel, and you should. Victor, go ahead and give yourself a plug. Uh, he not only, he, I think he early on figured out that there was an appetite for people that missed panels, and he started recording his panels with his, with his wife, and then they would put them online, and slowly but surely that got out there and people recognized that it was a lot of fun to kind of watch these panels in real life as people drew and, and talked about their experiences in comics and people could learn. And uh, that, that picked up steam as he kind of aggregated a number of different artists' streams. So, and, and uh, you know, I support that stream because I think it, he speaks to a wider audience than I do uh, because he covers a lot of different artists and he also edits them properly and, and, uh, put some real work into them, you know, I just kind of port mine out. So at the end of the day, it, it shows me what that potential size of that audience could be. All right. And frankly, if someone goes out there and puts the time and effort into it, I think you could, again, um, I would like to keep up with it if possible, but I think it all just comes down to time. And that's my long roundabout answer to the question of whether the new responsibilities will impact the streaming. So the, the short answer is yes. Um, but I think there are some cool opportunities, not just for myself or artists, but for companies to put the time and effort into it, right? Okay. These stripes are thinner right here. These are less important, these, these details, frankly, if I could be so bold to be honest, if I could be so bold to say, uh, and that people should be looking here, less over here. If people are looking here, then I think you're, you're doing your job incorrectly, right? As we get further and further away from the face, it should be less, less interesting, okay? Keep that and be able to reflect on it and, uh, you know, I think the image in and of itself, it, the fact that you put time and effort into drawing something for, uh, you know, someone you, you present it to is enough, really. I mean, I think it's the same argument about digital art, right? It's like you don't have the original to sell, but you don't need to because it's all about the process. It's all about the final image. guy's bulky. I'm going to pull it back because I don't know if he's that. <clears throat> okay, let's, let's get to inking this. So, so you want to be aware of the shapes, but then realize, hey, all these shadows seem to be going around the edge, right? The highlight is on the, the, the roundest part of the object that's highest up. And that point of reflection is typically three-fourths on a turn, right? So if you draw a, a ball, okay, if this is zero and this is uh, 90, 180, sorry, 180, this is 90 over here, that reflection is right there. And that's if the light source is here, typically, that's kind of where people put it. It's wherever that light, that distance is the shortest, that's where that reflection is going to be. And where it's the furthest away is where the shadows are going to be, all right? And at the very, very edge and perimeter of that, 
you have light over here that's not as strong and it's going to basically put a, a thin glow on the edges all right if you have those other light sources so that's why when you typically draw like a sphere you're basically drawing like a person here so you draw like a stick figure <clears throat> like a head shoulders body that's kind of warped and this over here we can put like a christmas tree okay see how there's a highlight around the edge of the ball and that reflects the light that's on the edge here that's being created by this rim lighting or bounce light actually off a wall here this core is bright because that represents this part right here which is the part facing the light source so maybe there's another person here another tree here right and that's how you create a shiny ball you can do the shadows um, without looking at reference because I just kind of know based on just those principles I showed you there where it would go um, and even on the eyes you could just the three-quarter part of this you know this is the halfway point the three quarters where it gets brightest so it's not too where I drew the eyeballs before that wasn't too far from the facts right there is a highlight right there but it also goes like this because the shadow of this helmet cast it blocks out the light so this reflection is a light source that's over here the light can't penetrate obviously through this brim and so it casts a shadow right there everybody's saying darth vader has a chain can you make it say number, number one dad <laughs> like right you know he, you're right i have a life-size darth vader in a room and there's a chain that basically connects this to this and it should be like yeah All right, sounds good. So I'm just drawing the shadows of these kind of divots here. Looks more realistic than actually just drawing the outlines of those divots. Um, put the light source here and here. So I'm going to go ahead and Pop that down there. Okay, so I gotta I'm gonna move fairly quickly because the way I'm gonna ink this with the shadows and stuff, a lot of this line work is just kind of it's gonna disappear anyway. And this is where I kind of I'm personalizing it. I'm not looking at reference. I don't know if there's a sh shadow here, if there's an indent. I think that's the way I remember it. So I think that's the way I'm going to draw it. So the, the little things. It's like when you draw the, you know, the, the length of the Batman's ears, right? Everyone does it differently. No one measures it out. They do it based on taste. Right? It's the amount of salt you put in a recipe. kind of do what, what feels right to you. So my version of Vader has like a little divot here. I don't know if that divot actually exists. It's like some people put like fangs on Punisher. I'm like, why would you do that? But some people did. Some people put uh, um, kind of part Superman's hair from the left side versus the right side. I think I did it from his left side over. Someone once told me I was doing it wrong. I'm like, mm, no, look at it. It exists. I'm doing it right. I've made it so. These characters don't actually exist. We can bend them to our will. We can bend them to our will. I should do that in a Vader voice. We can bend them to our will. And who said I wasn't a writer? Um, and then behind it is a filter, right? I'm sure it looks just nasty when he pulls it out, right? It's got like phlegm, 
dust. Sarlacc juice. If you really think about these universes, it's kind of gross. Right, right then and there, it's like... Okay, there's that grill right behind it. Anyway, the hardest part of Darth Vader, I think, is this, this, this helmet part. Because it's not symmetrical. Oh, it is symmetrical, sorry, but it's not... There's a lot of nuances to the shapes. Like even this line right here, like a, as I mentioned before. So that's why I think it's actually just easier to just lightbox it and trace it get it over with, and then manipulate it later, as needed. I'm exaggerating the size of that ridge, I mean the thickness in general, because I know if I go in with a brush it might get thinner. Uh, or I might just keep it thick like that. I think in if, from the photo reference, it, it looks a lot uh, thinner. See if I can do this properly here. I'm not sure. I'm just guessing. You know what? I don't. Is it that type of chain? I don't know what type of chain it is. That the fact that they would have a chain that looked like a chain that would be manufactured in the United States or on Earth always seemed funny to me. But then, I never saw a ballpoint pen in the Star Wars universe. But if there were a ballpoint pen, what would it look like? And why would it look like a ballpoint pen that we could buy at our local drugstore? All the guns and stuff, uh, a lot of it from Star Wars was based off of World War II armaments, like the Bren uh, submachine gun and things like that. So 
Um, that was kind of cool. Actually, I liked that. I liked the fact that it was kind of modified off of existing, and even the uniforms, like the, the Empire's uniforms look like the Japanese Navy uniforms, right? I think I just broke Star Wars. I'm, I'm ruining it for everybody. I, I can tell. With this, I was just like, people are like, oh, you're right. This is... This is, this is not helping. But dad jokes. <laughs> I remember when that was just called humor. I don't know what happened. What happened? Looks like he's got a thermometer here. It's like uh, Empire Giving Day. 30 million credits shy of the new Death Star. 10 cycles remaining. See how I changed all that to fit. Now I've done, and after you've drawn something by hand, you can clean up the edges by using a straight edge, and so it still looks kind of hand done, but at the same time, give it kind of that, that hard edge, I think, so it looks more mechanical, right? Sometimes I just do one side of it, and keep the other side um, hand drawn looking. But lining up some of these lines, there's value in that. Okay. All right. Let's say there's a hallway here. Here's that hallway. There's, that's where you can kind of go, all right? And I'm just using the brush. It's loaded up. Um, go in. But I'm going to, I don't know, I'm applying pressure, but also pulling up at the same time. And so the idea is that um, I'm getting some very abstract kind of shapes that are happy accidents, right? those shapes there. Maybe some dry brush in between. That always helps with the reflection I went over the line. I'll, I'll clean that up with um, white out. Okay. And go here. Do a dry brush in the center. Why not? So I'm just kind of reacting to the lines itself. I'm not sure exactly how much black's going to be in the final uh, piece, but um, you know, as you kind of, it'll tell you as you go through. Go, you'll you'll see stuff and go like, oh, that need, that should be black. I wish I could be clear on that, but it's like when writers tell you, oh yeah, the characters write themselves. They'll tell you their their dialogue. All right. I'm Okay. You are the line. <laughs> you are the line. Um, don't press so hard and then see what you get is my answer. 
So with the dry brush, I'm not trying to create an effect. I just lighten the, up on the pressure and I get something different than I could do than if I actually tried to create that line. Okay. So let's go in and go ahead and make the areas that are going to be true black. Black first. I have to coax that line out of the brush. And then you'll find that you have one brush stroke that works, works really well at a certain angle and a pressure. You can kind of get good at kind of hitting that line over and over again. So that gives you the control to kind of ink up to a line. So you see that I'm basically rotating this drawing so that I can keep hitting that line. It's like it's my groove move. <laughs> oh, that's horrible. You can hit those lines from any angle for the most part. But you'll find that when you first start out, there'll be a certain angle and um, stroke that, that works best for you. All right. Yeah, maybe, that, maybe, maybe it's not the groove move. So we'll first do the shadow of this brim. Most of this is in shadow as well. So I'm making up all these shadows kind of based on the um, eraser lines I put at the beginning, right? The, the eraser highlights, I guess. All right, there's no, I'm not referring to anything that, uh, a photo yet, um, but I will in a second, I think, just to see if what I put matches kind of. reality, I guess.
Now you can overdo it with these shadows or the reflections in the shadows. So you want to be a little careful. I don't have too many. I wanted to get a little more kind of true black in that area there. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to bring this down here. So I have more black in the helmet. Because you, you want it to be to read as a black shape, right? If you have too many highlights, it might read as white. Okay? Because we did um, mistakenly like a free for all or a sub five last two. I mean we got it back on track. So I think this is a sub ten. So this will be the giveaway for the sub ten. Hey, was after is was that was that comment after careful reflection? Do you think? Hmm. What am I going to say in chat at this moment? Hello. Hey now. What's up? I'll go with hey. Very universal. It's also a reflection that goes there, right? So we want to be aware of that. So to recap, uh, as far as the stream goes with the new responsibilities, the late night streams are, are definitely going away. I think the focus of what I draw, uh, I like this one. This was very thematic. Um, I'm not just drawing characters for the sake of drawing characters. Uh, there's, I might kind of incorporate some of the stuff I'd share and I say in a um, critique, portfolio critique into the actual st stream. So I kind of will try to, because sometimes I'm going to draw characters that people aren't into and I can kind of take an aside and talk about uh, some of the principles involved, the drawing principles, teach a little bit, which I think should always be the main focus, All right? And we'll go from there. You know, maybe I pull back from the personal stream and, and focus more on the DC stream. I don't know. I have to really kind of think about uh, what works best. Crypto Games, yes, this is the only one. And then I will do a drawing, uh, sort of a random pull for the um, four. Doesn't he have, uh, you know, he's got squares, I believe, right? This is like, uh, this is kind of what I remember from the, um, the life-size Darth Vader I have downstairs. There's like a texture to the to the arms. Square grid. I love the dad jokes. That's funny.
Okay, so that's like the basic ink inking for the figure. Now I'm going to adjust it for one, two, three. Now I'm looking at this going, where's my eye going? I've got all this competing with all this. So are there ways I can kind of consolidate the shapes here? All right, let's try. Let's, let's get rid of some of the side lighting here. What happens if I go to all black down here? Okay. And I go... To mostly black over here. I like I like this over here and the subtlety, and I'm gonna just reduce this just a bit. Okay, now where am I at? I want this to pop more. So I'm gonna surround it with more black shapes. And maybe this side won't get as much. So I'm going to dry brush it there. Kind of bring that in. You thought you were just getting drawing lessons, but you got my very sad sack, uh, lame use of lingo. You got my bad, horrible Darth Vader impersonations. And right now, like half the chat's going, was he impersonating Darth Vader? Is that what that was? I'm going to have this huge helmet cast a shadow, as it should. Right there. I like, I love that highlight there, but I don't know, I'm tempted to blacken all that out. The reason why I need to go black around that thing is I'm going to put some jewels in there and they're going to sparkle. And so there's going to be splatter there and the splatter won't work. Splatter doesn't show up on white, so it's got to go on black on black. Just make it smaller. Okay. Make that less bright. Have that kind of eye kind of disappear. Have that edge kind of disappear a little bit. Dare I say, almost done. So again, repeating elements there. Just 
just letting certain things kind of pop out. Of course, I can repop elements using whiteout as well, which I might do. I know that there's a highlight up here that I kind of penciled in, so I want to keep that consistent. I know where the edge is to, on this Kleenex, so I can actually kind of get there without going over the line if I so wanted to, I guess. Maybe some of this kind of almost looks like fire. Cosmos and fire. A little harder with the left side because my hand's in the way, but I can kind of guesstimate where it is. Before I get to giving this away to a sub 10 or sub 25, I will pull a name out for a sub, any subscriber to uh, send me a piece of their penciled art. I will ink it. Obviously, it can't be for something that's going to be published that would violate my contract, so please know. Um, and keep it simple. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah, I sent you my. Uh, five page um, massive you know uh, I'll communicate with you what might be an appropriate piece of art I'm gonna pull the focus of the stream back towards DC a little bit more uh, as well it's been kind of a free-for-all lately and uh, but I also want it I, I found it to be a lot of fun to kind of draw characters I've never drawn before so like anime manga three windows at a time kind of thing, right? Add some gems. they'll look like gems. So what do we have? We have to uh, pull for the person that's going to get their the work um, <clears throat> inked. So we'll do that right after I finish whiting this part out. And then I'll do the drawing for this Darth piece. Which give us uh, 
thicker dots than the toothbrush. Do a couple of reflections on the helmet too, but it's reflecting off the stars. All right. I don't know what's falling on the ground, but that sounded loud. Okay. Okay. That that number one dad sign just cracks me up. Uh, please check out the Discord channel. It is a supplement to the live stream. You, it's a great community of people that are into comics, games, movies, all that kind of thing. You can talk about uh, what you'd like to see in stream, how to make it better, and get the latest updates on when the schedule would be. All right? It is repetition which makes for perfection.